Hello and welcome. This time we are talking about applications of these strain gauges. Okay? Application examples. Example of strain gauge. Okay? This time we will discuss how we might glue them on, okay? Interesting for us is the maximum strain, the maximum stress, eh? because that's the thing which is limiting our, our construction, let's say. Okay? So let's assume there are different load cases. Let's assume we do have something some rod let's assume we do have some rod and this is the load case is we pull it so the resulting the resulting strain strain is a tension a Zugspannung tension then this rod will be a little bit will be a little bit longer And not that thick anymore. This will be the reaction of the of the uh, test element yeah, of the rod. So if we want to measure, we know the maximum the maximum strain will be in this direction okay so if we are using one one uh, strain gauge then we will glue it that way okay that's the direction of the strain gauge okay. since we have this poisson ratio yeah this quer den zahl uh, if we pull it, it will also get a little bit smaller, of course. Yeah. So, please remember, one is positive, one is negative, one is negative, one is positive. Yeah. If we want to use a half bridge, yeah, then the second one, I will glue on this way. Yeah. Because here it will be pulled apart and here it will be torn together okay this means here we will have more resistance here we will have less resistance and in total if one is positive and one is negative i have since this is negative negative it plus again okay in total i have more so this is dms number one this is dms number two yeah. And if I want to use a full bridge, I do the same on the back. On the back, this would be then four, yeah, of course, because four is also positive. And the second negative one on the back of the rod is DMS number three. Yeah. This is how I would put them at our Wheatstone bridge. Clear hopefully yeah because this will be pulled apart this will be st stuck together torn together zusammengeschoben yeah and this as well and this will also be pulled apart so one and four is plus two and three is minus perfect okay maximum maximum i took out of this yeah? if we do have the load case that it's not pulling it's pushing yeah it's basically it's basically the same yeah? because then we would start at the blue one end up at the black one and also these are the ones and the other one it's basically the same yeah? we have to glue it exactly the same way okay so this is this is a load case pulling or pushing okay of course 
here on two and three, I'm not only seeing the Young module, the Elasticity module. Yeah, here I also see the Poisson number, yeah, Poisson ratio, which gives the relationship between between lengthening and touring together. I have to explain this Poisson ratio, Poisson zahl, yeah, or Querdehnungszahl. If we do have a probe. And we pull it. Yeah. Now I will draw it like this, that the one below is at the same position. Yeah. We pulled this probe, so it got longer. Here we added delta x. Yeah. This was x0. Yeah. I just call it x. And this was y0. Yeah. And here we've got, here we've got y0 minus delta y. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a strain in x direction, in force direction. Yeah? This is the force direction. And we do have a strain normal to the force direction. Okay? The strain normal for the, to the force direction equals delta y through y0. Yeah? And the strain in force direction is delta x, x0. And there's a relationship between those two. There is a relationship between those two values and this relationship is called Poisson number, Querdehnungszahl, yeah? Poisson ratio. It's nu, yeah? and this nu is epsilon y yeah? divided by epsilon x and because one is negative and the two want to have positive numbers it's minus because here i forgot this one yeah it's minus so this is negative this means negative what does it mean yeah if we have a poisson ratio of 0 0.5 then the volume of this will stay constant because this means whatever is grown in length yeah, is reduced in diameter or in, pro in width, let's call it, yeah? volume constant. Okay. Whenever, whenever the is smaller than 0 0.5, yeah? Whenever this, this Poisson ratio is smaller than 0 0.5, it means volume will increase. This means we are tearing the, the, the atoms apart inside. Okay? This is a typical this is typical for metals. Yeah? This is rubber or something like this. Yeah? And this is typical for metals. That's the Poisson ratio. Okay? And this is why I can measure in this direction also. Then I do not only have the, the Young model, but also the Poisson ratio. So this is the load case tension and, com tension and compression. Okay? I will glue it that way. Now, what's about the load case? What's about the load case? Bending. Yeah. Let's see, let's bend. This is the original stuff, yeah. the original pro. Now I bend it, then I have, it, if I bend it this direction, I have here on the front side, I have tension 
and on the back side I have compression. Okay, it will look like it will look like this. Wee. Banana. Okay, this is if I bend it. Here, the maximum, the maximum stress is also in this direction. Yeah? So, I'm going to glue my first one in this direction. That's first. Yeah? The second one, which applies negative, I will put on the back side because there is compression. Yeah? So, I put it here on the back side. That's two. And if I really want to have a full bridge, then I will simply glue here four and on the back side also three. Okay. Clear. Okay. I can do this because I know in which direction the maximum strains, the maximum stresses are. Yeah. Even I can even do it. I can even do it on tension rods. Yeah, I can even do it on tension rods. Uh, because this is the original form. If I now add tension, yeah, it will simply bend that way. It will simply turn. Yeah? So this is the original line. And we will have here this turn. Okay. And here I can tell you the maximum strain is to 40, 45 degree forty five degree. Yeah. So this is also one, two, and the other ones are clear, I hope. Yeah. I've I've shown you in one video I have shown you a uh, uh, strain gauge yeah and there we could see exactly such 45 degree I'll show you once again hopefully you can see this you see this one 45 degree that's exactly for moment measuring okay what's this for I also showed you let's see if we can get the autofocus to work yeah now it should be fine I think this one this one I can use if I do not know if I do simply do not know in which direction my my maximum strain is. Yeah. Then there are two types of so-called rosettes. Yeah. This is a so-called rosette. This special rosette does have. Yeah, this special rosette does have the degrees. It's ninety degree, zero degree. And 45 degree. Okay, that's this reset. There are also resets which are 0, 60, 100, 120 degree. Okay, what can we do with this? Yeah, we apply them somewhere where we don't know where the maximum strain is. Yeah, then we measure the strain in this direction. In this direction, in this direction. So in 0, 90, 45 degree or 0, 60, 120 degree, depending on the type of rosette I'm using. Okay. And out of these tensions in the different in the different directions, yeah, I can calculate where must be the maximum tension. Okay. This is not that easy. This is not that easy to calculate this. Yeah. There is 
the tension circle, the so-called Morse circle, uh, involved out from different different stresses I can calculate the maximum stress uh, in another which might, might look in another direction. I can show you this uh, I can show you this in the script uh, and explain it explain it to you. Here is here is part of the script. Here we do see the different rosette form factors. Yeah? They might be overlapping, they might be like this, they might be like this. You have seen one. Yeah, you have seen one. Uh, so there's the 0, 45, 90, there's the 0, 60 and 120 degree. So we have a epsilon, a strain in direction A, B and C, also A, B and C here. Yeah. And out of these, I can calculate with this simple formula, <laughs> with the simple formula, I can calculate the maximum stress levels, uh, the maximum sigmas. Yeah. You see there is the E model involved, uh, there is the Querzahl or the Poisson value involved, there are different things involved. Uh, and depending if you have 0, 45 or 90 degree, uh, you uh, can calculate the maximum stress levels here. If you have 0, 60 and 120 degree, you can make, uh, calculate the maximum stress level with this formula. Okay. Interesting might be also the direction. Therefore, we have a helper angle. This helper angle can be calculated out of this formula. Yeah. And with this helper angle, and the re it's this Z and this N is called in German Zähler und Nenner, so that's the upper part and the lower part. Yeah. And here we can then calculate if the Zähler is greater than zero and the Nenner is greater than zero, we have load case number one. And the real value V of the main strain, of the main stress, is then calculated out of the helper value of like this. You see, it's not that easy if we do not know the load case. However, if we know the load case, we can use the effects of, of the Wheatstone's bridge perfect. Yeah? So we can get simply more sensitivity out of it simply by applying the DMS in a correct manner. Okay? That's the help each other measuring this. Yeah. I think that's about force and torque measurement. You see, this topic is not that easy. And it's also not that, that simple yeah, to learn, to do it in reality. However, it's a very interesting field because there is very, very a lot of physics involved. Yeah. Okay, next time, next time we are going to talk about level measurement. So we have a tank and we want to know the level inside. What are the possible things we can use there? This will be our next topic for this time. Thank you very much for listening and goodbye.